Hey everybody, it's Kelly and Troy from Beyond the Blinds. We're so excited to be on the Hollywood Raw podcast. We pulled our 10 favorite blinds. Troy, what's the list like? It's rotted. It's as you would expect. It's a rotten, ridiculous list, but it's very fun. And just remember, it's all alleged. Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up, let's go. Enjoy. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. My name is Adam Glynn, uh, joined by my buddy Dax Hold. Dax, how are you, sir? I'm very good. Excited about our guest today. Uh, these are two people that we did their podcast, um, and that's kind of how we got to know them. And now we've become pretty good friends with these guys. And it's Troy and Kelly from the Beyond the Blinds podcast. And, you know, celebrity blind items have just really taken off in the last... I don't know, two years, three years, something like that. And so their podcast is crazy, crazy successful. I just asked them, I said, hey, you guys want to stop by, join us for an episode, but I want you to bring on your 10 best celebrity blind items of all times. You guys know them better than anyone else out there. You guys are like just the king and queen of celeb blind items. So bring them here. Let's count them down. And I, I just thought that'd be a fun episode. How would you define a blind item, Dex? So a blind item is a story about a celeb without using their name. So you can say, hey, this person lives in Colorado or this person was an A-list movie star or, you know, you're, you're basically telling a story without revealing the name and it leads the audience to guess who that person is. Uh, Perez Hilton made this very famous back in like, you know, the early 2000s. He did a lot of blind items um, and it really caught on. And, you know, uh, blind items can be a little risky just because, again, not all blind items, it doesn't mean they're true. You can say there, a lot of these are alleged as people putting these stories out there, but I want to go into this episode letting everyone know these are alleged blighted items, so even when Troy and Kelly reveal their name, take it with a grain of salt because, you know, it's 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 just a story. Yeah, we told them to bring the heat, though. We want, some, we want some dirt. We want some gossip. We want some big-name juice, and they assured us they're going to bring that. Before we get to them, we do this thing in this podcast where if you leave a review, we will actually read your review live on air. That's the best thing to do to support this podcast. I always say that. But it's true, and you guys have made a huge difference with us. We don't ask for money. We're not a Patreon. All we do is ask you to go to iTunes. If you listen to it on iTunes, put in Hollywood Raw. Go to the bottom as you're in Hollywood Raw, and you can leave a review. Put five stars and say a few kind words. If you do that, we're going to read your review live on air. Dax, do you have a review ready for us? I got a couple. We're going to do three today because people have just been fueling us with reviews lately, which has been amazing. And remember to put your name in the review. We've we said that a couple times and people have started doing it. I just haven't made it to those comments yet. But do your review and then say Debbie from Detroit. And uh, that way you can actually say your name rather than just your screen name. But here you go. Uh, this one comes from Rio Fox 988. Love it. Five stars. Found you on Juicy Scoop. Always happy to find a good pod, and I am definitely so glad to find you guys. Rio Fox, thank you. Very much appreciate Rio that. Thank you. What's All next, right. Dax? Number two is Bay Area Lucky. This one says love. Uh, heard you on Juicy Scoop and love your podcast. Can't wait to hear more. Dude, Juicy Scoop just rocking it for us. That was a Bay fun Lucky. Yeah, that was a fun interview. All right. Yeah, and the last one. The la oh, here's another Juicy Scoop one. Jeez. Uh, love this podcast. Five stars. Started listening after I heard them on Juicy Scoop. I'm a Gen Xer, so I love that they cover current celebs and throwbacks who make the news. So that one is from N Salad. So <laughs> how do they get these names, by the way? I think does iTunes just like give you a name? Cause yeah, I mean – Sometimes it's like you can't eat, like you go and you, you give whatever iTunes basically says you want this one. And you go, sure. I'd like to be end salad. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for leaving those reviews. Keep them coming. Put your name at the end of them. We'll give you like, put your specific name um, so we can really make sure you hear that. You know, it's a shout out to you. Also, leave your social security number, your credit card number. Um, <laughs> Mother's maiden name. 
<laughs> don't give us any children. We don't want your firstborn, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Dax. Let's uh, let's get to our guest today. Troy Kelly, thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to have you guys on the podcast. Finally, uh, you know, if if you guys haven't checked out the Beyond the Blinds podcast, we were guests on their podcast. What was that like? Three months ago, four months yeah, ago, something like that. Yeah, it was. A, it's a great episode. And if you're if you're into celebrity blinds, you will absolutely love it. Both Adam and I have checked out their live shows. We've checked out their their podcast as a whole, um, and so. I am excited to run down some of your guys' favorite celebrity blind items of all time. Because you guys are the, the, the reigning champs of blinds. So <laughs> oh, you, guys know, you guys know blinds more than anyone else on the planet, at least in my book. So I figure whatever your list is, is the greatest list of celebrity blinds. And so we'll talk about it. You guys will get them out. Adam and I will put our heads together from our years and years of working in the entertainment industry, try to figure it out, and then you guys will reveal who the blind was actually about. Does that sound good? Yes. I'm okay. excited for this. I've seen them do the live shows, and people are <laughs> so into it during the live shows. Like, they're guessing it while the show's going on, so it's, like, fun for to kind of be the only two, like me and Dex. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start this game, why do you, in the past, you know, 10 years ago, we saw blind eyes take off, you know, and then it kind of quieted down for a little bit, but then thanks to you guys and a few other people, and you guys have been in the forefront of bringing back the blind items and making them exciting again. Why do you think people obsess about this or kind of get excited by these things? I think everybody loves gossip, whether they want to believe it or admit to it or not. And blind items are different because it's like dirty gossip, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Like it's like riddles and you don't know if it's true or false, but I give a lot of credit to like Dumois with the pandemic. I think that they did a lot for blind items and luckily Troy and I are, we're already like well-versed in them. So, yeah. so yeah, I think that Dumois and just quarantine in general, what do you think, Troy? I agree. I think Dumois during quarantine really kind of changed everything because a lot of people, I, I, I think, Kelly and I joke a lot about how blind items exist in this really like prehistoric space on the internet, like old school websites and like, you know, with HTML and all of this, like old school. And I think Dumas like made it feel modern for younger people, mm -hmm. you know? Cause it was like Perez Hilton for the longest time. It was like, he did a lot of the blind items. And so you, you, mm -hmm. you know, and then it went away. I feel like for, like 10 years, like the, the obsession over blind items. And then, yeah, it came back and now everyone's obsessed with them. And I think it's just half of the game. The game is fun, right? Like at the end of the day, it doesn't mean a blind. I, I think there is a misconception because I don't think a blind necessarily means it's bad. It can also be a yeah. good blind item. It can be something that's positive, but it's just, you're not revealing the name right away or, you know, you, you're making people guess. And I love it. It's really fun. Or bore. sometimes they're just boring. Like, mm -hmm. I think people always think that they'll be this crazy. Sometimes it's like really stupid, you know? Here's a question Will your guys' Scientology episode ever actually air? Or is that a live only thing? It will, we'll, we'll release it. Um, well, it'll probably have even more blind items and all that fun stuff. Cause for our show, we don't want it to be so just us reading to the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so we usually read like 20 blinds during the show, but during an episode, we'll read what, like 40 to 50 blind items. Yeah. Jeez. We read a lot. I, so we'll do a real Scientology episode. I loved, it was so fun. So they, they covered Scientology when I was at their live show and it was just, oh, it was good. It was super juicy. It was exactly what I would have wanted from a Scientology blind item episode. So I you guys did it out, you. Of, out of the park. Can I give a blind item real quick? And something that we brought to we brought to attention in the off the record Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group we have for some of the people that listen to the podcast. And here's a little blind item I had for you guys. Ooh, and switching the script around. Adam's bringing <laughs> blind items to them. Okay. I like this. It's true. A friend of mine uh, who's a driver drives, you know, A-list stars, billionaires, celebrities. I mean, everyone. He's, he's, he's been driving for a while. Um, he was driving a celebrity for a week and A-list star and super cool. On the way to their private jet on the way out of New York City, the star – asked their security guard said hey can i smoke weed on the plane and if, again if you're in their off the record group you guys have seen this story um the the security guard said actually it's a new jet we can't smoke on the plane 
So this celebrity said, you know what? Screw it. Let's just pull over real quick, and I'll smoke a joint real quick before I get on the plane. They pull over. As drivers pull over, they pull over, and the celebrity starts to smoke a joint on the side of the road in New Jersey. And the security guard knocks on the window and says to the driver, goes, hey, do you smoke weed? Driver's like, actually, I do. He said, come out. Come smoke. And the celebrity started to smoke weed with the driver, my, my friend. And he was like, dude, this is a surreal moment for me. I can't believe I'm smoking with this person. They were super cool. It's someone that you know. Like you're not surprised that they smoke weed. But then they got high. They had got food. And then they got on the plane, took a private jet back to L.A. very high. But it was just a cool story for my friend. He's like, dude, I can't believe – I well, now, now you've got to reveal yeah. it. They reveal their blinds. Yeah. Do you guys have <laughs> you any have guesses? <laughs> is it a male or female? Here's the thing is, I can't reveal who it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Adam. The reason why I can't reveal it is I don't want the person to hear it, and then they go back like, oh, my God, I remember smoking with that that driver. I, I, but I'll tell you guys as soon as the camera goes off. <laughs> okay. No, that's not fair to our audience. <laughs> well, I mean, if it was like a guy or a girl, I could probably at least like make a guess, right? Yeah, no Listen, well, tell, it, tell them if it's a guy or a girl. It's a girl. I can only pray it's Cara Delevingne. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a great guess. Troy, who's your guess? I'm going to guess Gaga because we just read that Gaga has a professional uh, – weed roller she's a professional blunt and joint roller um so and that's just fresh in my mind so i'm just gonna say gaga i feel like very good guesses i had also guessed gaga neither one of you are right but let's get into your number <laughs> 10 blind item uh, yeah so you guys will give the blind items to us dax and i are gonna try to guess and see who it is let's go i'm excited for this try Kelly, do you want to go do... first i could go first okay <laughs> <clears throat> This is a Mr. X blind. Which one name talk show host is fuming that the foreign born one name singer with a new album on the way is seriously considering going to the illiterate talk show hosts show before hers? Not illiterate, illiterate. <laughs> so there's three, there's three people in this blind. Okay. Ellen is one. Okay. And then it's it's a singer, a, a male singer. Is that what it was? It's a foreign-born one-name singer with a new album on the way. And so this Madonna, is from no, earlier Madonna's this year. Madonna's not foreign. Uh, Adele? Ooh, it's an Adele one. Okay, all right. Adele on Ellen. And what was the last part of it? And she's choosing to go on a different talk show host. It says illiterate. Oh, yeah, she's an illiterate talk show host. Ooh. Ooh. James Corden. No. Uh. No, let's see. Let's see. Who else would be at? I mean, Kelly Clarkson? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Look at me. I am, I am doing well so far. That's just one of my favorites, just because I love Kelly Clarkson so much, and the fact so, Adele would rather go on Kelly Clarkson than Ellen is all I needed to know. So was it Ellen that was upset that Kelly yeah. got the, the big scoop? I mean mm – -hmm. That that is a huge person to lose out on the interview to. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. whenever Adele releases anything, it's like pandemonium. Everyone's watching her specials. So for her to lose an interview to Kelly Clarkson, I could see why that would rub her pretty raw. <laughs> Whoa. That's a good blind. All right. Really if that's number 10, I can only imagine what number one is. <laughs> that was such a good riddle. That's a good one. Okay. All right. I like it. Troy, give me number nine. Okay. Okay. So Jessica Simpson and this A list celebrity rap star hooked up after he was brought in to maybe help her with some songs when she was thinking of going in a new direction. <laughs> she made it, Kelly does. She made a confession to him, and one thing led to another, and they spent all night together. They did end up recording one track together, which has never seen the light of day. I. I have a guess, but I, it's a question is, I don't know if this person's considered a list. Do you have a person in your head, Dax? I'm going to say Eminem. And the only reason I'm saying Eminem was because of the Mariah Carey. Like I thought maybe he likes like pop stars, hot pop stars. So he like, I, I don't know. That's my guess. Eminem. I was going to say, and this is probably, uh, you know, I was going to throw one out there. It could be kind of random, but maybe up her alley was G easy. 
Oh, that's a good one. Are those your really final guesses? No, no. I don't feel like it's a final. I don't feel confident with my guess anymore after Troy's face. Um, I gotta hide my face. Let's see. Maybe Eminem's too big. He wouldn't go for Jessica. He's made fun of Jessica too many times in his songs. Okay, I take back my guess. My <laughs> guess now is ooh, shoot. I have no idea. Dax is trying to think if Pitbull's considered a rapper. <laughs> I'm like literally going through my catalog of like, who could I see? Well, it's like, first you have to think of a rapper. Then you have to think of a single rapper. Then you have to think of like a single rapper potentially like years ago. Ah, I don't know. Is Flo Rida A-list? Flo Rida? No, I'm just joking. Oh, oh, I was like, okay. I'm Um, just kidding. I don't know. Who is it? It's Jay-Z. No. Shut up. Yeah, no. I love that blind. I and just love remember, that blind. everything's alleged. None of these blinds have been <laughs> yeah. confirmed as true. We wow. been what? My second That's... guess was to be Nelly, but okay. <laughs> Can you Jay-Z. imagine? Just think about the Jay Z Jessica Simpson collab that never hit the light of <laughs> like that. That shit is burnt at this point. Beyonce burnt with herself. <laughs> She was like, For this sure. thing is never happening. Wow. She came, Whoa. she used the uh the like the hot sauce bat on the recording <laughs> studio and said, not today. Not today. <laughs> not today. Wow. I would have literally he would have been my last guess. Would never have guessed Jay-Z. I, yeah, that was I love that blind. <laughs> I love it. All right. That was a good one. All right. Kelly eight. Now this blind is very 2009. Okay. Wait, that's a In- good sweet spot for us. We like that. Which two actresses who recently co-starred in a film dislike each other so much that when they were at the salon the same day, one asked to have her hair color applied in the garden. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's good. And this is from 2009. So that's your hint. They starred in a movie together in 2009. Okay, so Lindsay Lohan, she was doing movies back then. Right? Lindsay Lohan, 2000. No, 2007, she's already kind of done. All right. I'm going to take back my Lindsay Lohan, but I feel like she'd be catty. Um, I was actually, as soon as you said girl, it threw me off because I was thinking guys. And for some reason, I th- thought maybe they went to a salon. I was thinking Vin Diesel on the rock, but then I was like, maybe that was later than 2000. But they have no hair. Yeah, I was like, they're just getting. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, Can you give us a oh genre of like acting? Like even celebrity, A list? Um, I would say in 2009, they were definitely both A-list. One is probably a B-list now, and the other is probably like A-minus list. Um, they can both sing. It's two female actresses that can both sing. Oh, so Leah Michelle. Nope. Damn it. Damn, that was good, Dax. That was, I know. <laughs> I was feeling that. I was feeling that guess. Yeah, there's a lot of blind uh, items in her. Um... I wish I could hear our audience right now just screaming at their yeah, their speakers, like, being like... I, I'm trying to think of other guesses. It was a rom-com movie, like a buddy-buddy girl rom-com movie in one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Lisa Kudrow. No. Kudrow. I don't feel like Lisa could be mean to anyone, though. Uh, you'd be surprised. I ran into her on the street. <laughs> 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 oh, damn it. I am striking out on this one. Um... I don't know. Who you got? It's Anne Hathaway and Kate Hudson after Bride Wars. No. I I swear to God, I was going to say Anne Hathaway, but then I was just like, oh, <laughs> has, has she ever been A-list? And then like that was in oh, my mind, and then I moved on. Yeah, I don't know. Anne Hathaway, of course. It's just one of my favorites because of all the rumors that were happening while they were on set together, and the idea of Anne Hathaway being like, I'll be in the garden if you need me. Like, that just cracks me up. Please dye my hair in the garden so I don't need to be near this bitch getting her hair blown out. (laughs) All right. I love it. All right. That was a good one. Good, good, good. All right, Troy, you're up. Okay. This is, like, one of my favorite blinds of all time. This singer has never been known as the brightest tool in the shed. But (laughs) even for her, this is disturbing. At, at an, an after party last night for Fashion Rocks, the singer tried to buy some Coke from a guy who took her money and promised to return right away with the Coke. I can't look at Kelly because she knows. He never came back, so she went looking for him and found him. When she confronted him and demanded her money back, he refused. And then she said, I'm going to, I'm going to find a cop and tell him that you stole my drug money. 
the guy <laughs> couldn't stop laughing in her face. Wait, wait, <laughs> what was the top of it? Give me the top of it one more time so I can... The singer has never been known as the brightest tool in the shed, but okay. even for her, this is disturbing. Singer. And, and I went to the Fashion Rocks fashion shows back in the day. Like, numerous this of them. This probably happened right next to you. I'm, I, like, I'm thinking, who was there? Dax, any Coke guys near you that looks suspicious? <laughs> I, mean, I sold Coke to Jessica Simpson once, but she ran off and then went to go tell the cops. Is it Jessica Simpson? I would say, I'm going to say Kesha. No. Those like, final guesses? Yeah. Oh, I hate when it does that. Okay. It's Ashley. It's Ashley, Ashley Simpson? Simpson? Yeah. Oh! And well, that's I so that, funny. Literally, I, I am 99% sure that I was at that Fashion Rocks <laughs> event because Fashion Rocks was huge back in the day. And that was oh, yeah. around when Ashley Simpson was massive. Mm-hmm. Like she was putting out Peace songs. and Yeah. Yeah. So that is out. so funny. I met... Wow. I met her dad and her at some of okay, whatever. Yeah, Not important. But what, how was that? Yeah. What what was the deal with Joe? Yeah, what was Joe? It, what was was just, dad? He was weird. I mean, yeah. he, he was Joe Simpson. But I remember <laughs> like meeting him at the time and like trying to get an interview. And he was very much like the the ringleader of everything. And but she was she was on top of the world. She had a reality show. She was almost bigger than like Jessica at that oh, yeah. point. And also yeah. she did SNL, yeah. and then everything kind of took a it got mm-hmm. weird after that. But I I mean her reality show was great. The album was incredible. Like mm-hmm. she was mm-hmm. on the verge to be, at, at least at that point, uh, not business wise, but you know on the acting singing level, bigger than Jessica. Mm-hmm. It, it was a oh, great sure. song. Pieces of Me was still a great song. And can we also just put her down as the best nose job of all time? I say that. I don't but agree. She, I no? think she's number two. I think she's number, number two. Who would have a better nose job than her? Blake Lively. Oh, that's mm-hmm. tough, Dax. She does have a point. Blake Lively. <laughs> but what but from beginning to like the transition? So. Yeah, it's, I See, think so. Like Ashley's acknowledged it, she's embraced it. I, I just think that it transformed her, and it I still applaud that nose job. I, I'm like, that doctor should get an award. It was very iconic, especially because everybody <laughs> talked about it. Everybody <laughs> talked nose about job. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> nose job. This turns into a plastic surgery podcast. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> we, we digress here. Okay, number six. So I have a kindness blind. We don't get cool. many of those, and this is from 2009. My sweet spot, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> this C-list actress slash sometimes singer with A-list name recognition has moved from a tween television star to movies. On a recent cross-country flight, she was sitting in a first-class seat with one of her friends when a woman came aboard who was carrying an infant and had a toddler with her as well. While the woman was standing in the aisle waiting to proceed, our actress started talking to her, and before you know it, the actress and her friend moved to the back of the plane and gave the woman their two first-class seats. Oh, as an added kicker, the actress had a middle seat for the entire flight from L.A. to New York and never once complained. Ooh, this is That's a nice good story. one. I like this story. Nice story. So she was a C-list actress. C- C-list, but then kind of moved to A-list, you said? I, so she, in 2009, she was a C-list actress with A-list name recognition, who was once a tween television actress, but has gone on to movies. I was going to say Amanda Bynes. Like, I feel I like, I that first, and then because that, I feel like that is something Amanda Bynes would have done. Cause she was like, so down to earth and chill and amazing. Um, so not Amanda Bynes. Okay. Let's go with Adam. Who are you choosing? Dude, I'm like, it's just so this game, this is tough. <laughs> A-list, then move to A-list tween. But um, A-list. Oh, A-list. A-list recognition. But that's what's throwing me off is like to have a name that's bigger than what you are. Yeah. So a lot of celebrities have that. Someone I use a lot is like Liam Hemsworth. He hasn't been in a movie in forever, mm-hmm. but because who he's related to and who he's been in relationships with, like his name is still like very B, B, P, B, B or B plus. Mm. So nice gotcha. Now was this, was this uh actress, was she in like Disney shows? Because that's how I picture this. Yeah. Okay. 
I like this. This is fun. Uh, I'm going to go with Selena Gomez. Not Selena. You're very close with Selena. No. <laughs> Think of like the generation before them. Okay. Before before Selena? Mm-hmm. But Selena's kind of like carbon copied this person's career. Ariana Grande. No. Hillary Duff. Oh, <laughs> dang it. I'm you so know what? Mad. Totally a Hillary Duff move, too. I get it. Like, it makes sense. Right when you said it, I'm like, ah, yes. Oh, I was, I, I, I was going to say that. <laughs> I know. I should have like, let you guys have one more guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I love. Somehow I took that away from the decision making. <laughs> Some of these stories, though, like it, it, all time, like I love juicy, salacious stories. But hearing stories about celebs like doing little things like this, I love them. And I think it's because you're more unlikely to get a story like this mm -hmm. than like someone doing drugs or someone running from cops or whatever. Those get old after a while. But like you don't hear about celebs giving up their first class seat to someone they don't even know. Good story. Great point. I think they I stick with you more, too. Like I remember – people's kindness blinds more than I do like yeah. the really dark ones. I'll, I always remember the nice ones. Yep. I agree. It's easier for me when, I, you know, listen, I'm very fortunate. I've met a lot of celebrities. It's easier for me to tell the cool people than the jerks. You know? Yeah. So, I agree yep. with you. All right. That was a good one. Nice job. That was really good. Okay. What are we on? I, five? Six or five? I think we're on five. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so the title of this one, Young Singer Will Do Anything for a Freebie. <laughs> this is an old blind. It's from like 2003. Okay, so Jesse Metcalf. <laughs> <laughs> a blind item in the Sunday Mirror asks, which young singer might be worth millions, but she and her her hanger-on boyfriend will do anything to book to blag a freebie the lady in question has driven one poor designer potty she this is a, a uk blind apparently she gets her minions to call the designer up most days demanding free clothes buy your own love <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good um well i'm i'm gonna lean towards it's it's a british star but then i don't know if you guys would be reporting on it and let's be realistic isn't every celeb kind of doing this? Yeah, kind of. Like, it's like not necessarily it's them calling. Of. It's just their stylist calling for them to be I'm like, Instagram, I, so it's crazy. I need some free shit. Um, I'll give Adam, you a you hit because this is so broad. Yeah, can you narrow like, it just a little bit for us? I will tell you that you wouldn't be surprised by this person being, like, mean. And it's a and it's a singer, <laughs> you said, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go... Because it's UK, I'm going with Mel B. Oh, okay. that is a fantastic guess. Fantastic. I'm going to say <laughs> Natasha Bedingfield. It's Christina Aguilera. No! What? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> That's why my hint was that she's mean. <laughs> I am... So okay, it makes sense. But I, I guess... I would be surprised that Christina would have to ask for clothes. She's right. someone that has always been pretty damn relevant and famous and in the spotlight that I'm surprised she would have to beg for clothes from people. Yeah, but it would be a little bit more difficult, though, I think. True. True, true, true. Trust me, dude. All right. I know my friends who have these Instagram accounts and they like run Instagram Instagram accounts for you know some pretty cool companies. And the number of celebrities that go into their Instagram accounts and like ask for freebies and just kind of loot like, hey, you could send me some stuff is incredible. It's insane. Like the names, like you're talking about A-list stars are reaching into the DMs like, hey, can you throw me some free stuff? It's like, dude, I just saw you signed to a movie for 13 million. I think you could afford it. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. reminds me of back in the day when celebrities used to do – um what are those rooms called where you get all the free stuff? Like gifting a swag suites. Room? Yeah, like gifting a swag, suite. like a gifting suite. Oh, I I miss gifting suite photos. Like the Z100 gifting suite. Oh my yeah. god, so fun. And it was literally just Tara Reid standing there with like Ed Hardy sunglasses on. Yeah, literally yeah. like digital cameras. Yeah. <laughs> so I I um 
So when TMZ first started, we were with AOL. And so we got to go to a lot of these random gifting suites to like cover them. And I remember people, they would give out like cruises, cruises or shirts that instead of buttons, there were diamonds and like people would walk up. (laughs) And then I look around, I'm like, do you realize who's here? Like it's the host of extra and like, (laughs) Uh, Tracy Bing- Billingham or whatever her name was. It was on Bingham. Baywatch. How dare you, Bingham? Bats. Yeah, Bingham. sorry. Tracy How Bingham who was on Baywatch 80 years ago. Like, she was really nice, by the way. I, I just <laughs> fucked up her name. But she was wonderful. It's just, it was funny, the the crowd that was going through there trying to get, like, free T-shirts and stuff. Dude, I'm at the point in my career, though, like, if I go to, like, a, like a let's just say, like, a basketball game and they, like, run on the court and they shoot out, shoot out T-shirts out of a cannon – I'm trying to like, grab those teachers because I need clothes. Like that's where I'm at in my career. So, I can't like, I can't set up for a future. You know, I can't blame. <laughs> All right. What's next? Well, Troy, I found like the good, good one. So I think that should be the number one one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For but sure. this one's this celebrity offspring of a permanent A plus plus lister doesn't want everyone to know the source of her income for the past decade because it would get people's jaws to drop. So she does everything she can in court to fight it. So what she does, she's a ghost writer for Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey, Justin Timberlake, and Lady Gaga. And she's um, an offspring of a permanent A++ lister. Hmm. This one's hard. Yeah, this one because I'm thinking of someone that needs to be like older, obviously. So their AA list parent has to be like a lot older. I mean, it, it can't be Kate Hudson because she doesn't ghostwrite. I don't think. Mm-mm. Um. Ooh, Adam, anything? Man, um. At first, when you're going, I was like trying to debate. Like, yeah, it's this one's tough. like Bryce I, Dallas Howard or something. No, no, I would say Bryce Dallas Howard. There, like, there are three names though. This person, this woman, does have three names. That's a good. Um, all I can think about is Jennifer Love Hewitt in my head, but I don't think <laughs> she's got a famous celebrity parent. Not, not J Love, not J Love. <laughs> now, is yeah. okay. Is the person that we are trying to guess? Are they recognizable by themselves at this point? Um, I or is it mostly so. about their parent? No, they've had a lot of, re- or at least a few high profile relationships. Oh, man, Dax, I, I, this one, I am like, this is hard. Three, this is hard. The three, I'm trying to think of someone with three names. Three names with a super famous celebrity parent. Oh. Angelina Jolie. It should be a real game show. Hit. <laughs> yeah, it's not a real game show. Um, I mean, I could give one more hint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more hint. Their parent has a movie coming out about them. Oh, Elf. oh, Lisa Marie Presley. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that was, was good. That was oh, a good one. That was, was a it? good. Thank you for that. I. Why would she care? That well, seems I so think, weird. I think the artists care. I don't think, like, say, Beyonce or Taylor Swift or Justin Timberlake. So I think that's why she's trying to keep it so quiet so she doesn't. At, who is dumb enough to think that Lisa Marie Presley isn't rich as hell thanks to her father's empire that he created? Like, <laughs> he, she is the sole heir of his estate and everything. Of course she's rich as shit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why this is so weird. Like but why she, she would want to hide that. Just because the way she's also getting money is as a ghostwriter. Because as a Swifty, I don't want to hear Lisa Marie Presley is writing Taylor Swift songs. But then I also think that it's not necessarily a ghostwriter if you're just you're writing with the celeb, right? That's true. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. If, if I was like Taylor Swift, I would lean into it and be like, Lisa Marie Presley. Yeah, rock royalty. The princess yeah. of like rock is helping me write songs. Yeah, I would lean in the lean into that shit, Taylor. That's a marketing thing. No kidding. 
That so is Troy, a good one. Good one. Good do you one. Wanna, Troy, do you want to do your next two and I'll end with the um with, with the, the, the one? Ooh, yeah, because I have one that's very for silly. number one. Okay. I gotta this is I'm gonna do my silly one and then my real good one. Okay. Okay, so this one is which chart topping diva keeping company with another big name woman at the VMAs is sparking rumors that the two are more than just friends. Now, one of these people we have already talked about, and I will tell you that one of them is Christina. And there was like a rumor for a while that Christina was dating this very specific woman. And I will let you guess. Wow. You, I was, I was literally like going Lizzo and Cara Delevingne right then. <laughs> and then I got, off, I got sidetracked by Christina Aguilera. And now I'm going through my Rolodex of like who Christina has been spotted out with over the years. Brittany. No. I know. Remember she hooked up with, wasn't she made out with Brittany at the VMAs? N- n- well, no. I mean, that was Brittany and Madonna got all the, the fanfare, and Madonna and Christina, it just got nothing. Um, <laughs> Christina, who the hell would she be? And she was, and it's another singer? This person has sang. <laughs> oh. They have. For some reason. It, Paris I Hilton? Yeah, Paris? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. That is a good one. That's fun, right? Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> this is all alleged, but wow, that would be fun. And there was like a time when Christina was like being talked about a lot in blind items as like the girl who will sloppily try and hook up with other girls. And they're all like, mm, <laughs> no, like Christina getting turned down was like a story for a while. This is dirty. I like yeah, it. That's good. I'm going to call Paris right now and ask her for the truth. Let's call Paris real quick. Yeah, call her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paris, hey. Uh, hey, Paris. Oh, Paris, that's a good one. Pretty, All right. Yeah, that's good. All right. Get now. Okay. We're on number two right now, yeah? Okay. This is a really good one. A little bit more salacious, though. This married writer slash producer slash director wanted to wanted to direct this much anticipated movie, a movie for which there was a lot of competition. Well, one day the producer of the movie came over to the director's house to interview him for the job. While he was there, the director's beadless movie and television actress wife showed up. She sat in on the interview and made it perfectly clear the pro- to the producer that she was perfectly willing to sleep with him right then and there to get her husband the job. The next day, the producer came over and our actress and he had sex. The director got, or yeah, the director got the job. And what he might not have expected though, is that his wife who has done this kind of thing in the, in the past has continued to sleep with the producer. There's so much detail, I get lost. I'm <laughs> yeah, not gonna I, know, lie. I, I get lost in like, wait, I what? I don't care about the story. I didn't care about the name. I was like, man, this is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, this is a wild story. This is Hollywood, man. Yeah. Okay, I, so B-list actress. They said that she was a TV actress, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize her as that. She's a is uh, married to movie someone. Actor. She was married to this person, and. He is, yeah, a jack of all trades, but they both have done everything, I guess. Oh my god! Very, this, very A list. This is these are uh, tough. These are I really the hard. Show and I can't think of anything about these things. I'm getting mad at myself. Um, I have, I'm li- I, I have no idea on this one. No idea. Okay, I'll give you a good hint. Okay. Um, the way that these two met is controversial. Woody Allen. Whoa, whoa. Is this um no. I'm thinking of Rupert Everett or whatever his name was, but that cheated with Kristen Stewart, but that's not the same. Okay, <laughs> never mind. I'm sorry, I messed that up. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I'm going Woody Allen. I mean, I'm looking at Troy's face. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess for the hint that he gave. Though. That's an amazing guess. It can't be Spielberg. No, wait, wait she, be, yeah, Spielberg had a, his wife was an actor. Yeah. He's a no, yeah, no. Oh, what is it? What? Who They're did an that acting type? pair. Mm-hmm. Oh, an acting pair. Andy's a director, or I'm so confused. Very a list. Me. Um. Is he who did the who did Titanic? 
John Cameron. Uh, James Cameron. James Cameron. No, okay. Not him. And these two are no longer together. Huge divorce. Epic, major, iconic divorce. And they were an epic, major, iconic couple when they got so together. So A-list. Brad and Angie? That's it. Really? That's it. What? No. That's, so That's it. That no. So read, now read the blind again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want me to? Yes. Now I gotta. Okay. Now I gotta try to put it all together. This is all alleged, by the way, because they get to it. But no, it's. <laughs> I'll read you this fairy tale folklore thing one more time. This married writer slash producer slash director wanted to direct this much anticipated movie, a movie for which there was a lot of competition. One day, the producer of the movie came over to the director's house to interview him for the job, and while he was there, the director's B-list movie and television actress wife showed up. I don't know why they call her television. She sat in on the interview and made it perfectly clear to the producer that she wanted, that she was perfectly willing to have sex with him right then and there to get her husband the job. And the next day, the producer came over to her house. They had sex. The director got the job and didn't realize that his wife continued sleeping with this person behind his back. I can't believe this one. This one, I I think this is too folklory to believe it. The only reason, it's like, you couldn't get any more A-list than these two people. Mm-hmm. So, like, I can't imagine them having to to do that kind of thing. But again, I guess there's weirder shit that happens in Hollywood. I, and also, not all blind items are true. That is very true. Mind. They As are we go to this final blind item. <laughs> oh God! All right, number one. I am. <laughs> hold on, buckling up. Click. Okay, because right. there's no way you're gonna guess the three people. But it's just such a good group of people. Okay. If you ever needed proof that this former A-list infamous celebrity makes a lot of her living doing yachting, then just look at her two best celebrity friends and how they make most of their money. I'm just trying to figure out where they were yachting together to meet one another. They are three completely different types of people. So that's all it says, but one has an infamous trial in a different country. Okay. One was on a like teen drama in the early 2000s. And the third, I don't know, Troy, how would you describe the third dated um, someone famous? <laughs> 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 wow, you really nailed it down for us there, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> the third's more like what? Like an influencer Instagram model now, Troy? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, Amanda Knox. <laughs> yeah? Oh, Dad, Boom. You, so good. <laughs> you yeah. are. Well, <laughs> infamous international trial. Okay, okay. Amanda Knox. I was going to say uh, from Dawson's Creek. Close, but not Dawson's Creek. One Tree Hill. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said that close. <laughs> <laughs> like Vampire Diaries or like before Vampire Diaries? Before Vampire Diaries and think of the other coast. Amisha Barton. Yep. God, I am so good at this. I cannot guess Angelina and Brad, but I got my Amanda and Misha Barton going. Okay. And then... And then- the- the third, she's more of like an Instagram person now, but she was known for dating really famous guys and being the best pegger in Hollywood. The best <laughs> pegger in Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> That's a thing. Um, Very much. According to her blind item life. Okay, okay, okay. Think, think, Dax. It's been Instagram. Um, Is she still... Relatively well known. <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna say she's still pegging. I literally, <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> I would say if you know her name, you know her name. Like she's not. I, I don't know how else to explain her. Um, it's it's Vanessa Hudgens, but that was that's the only name thing that comes to mind. No. Me. Oh, okay. Any other clues? Can you give us one person she's dated? I just keep thinking of pegging. Like, All right, one um, person she's pegboarded. Kanye West. Oh, um, Chantel Jeffries. No, no, uh, the the one that shaved her head. Um, what's her name? 
The one that has a slut walk. Her Amber name. Rose. Yes. Amber Rose. There we go. That is a really random group. <laughs> and Amber Rose is a yachter? What? That is my favorite blind of all time. The idea of Amanda Knox, Misha Barton, and Amber Rose in a room together just hanging out. I mean, doing whatever they're doing, but I'm obsessed with that one. It's like I've dreamt it, but for it to be real. <laughs> that would be so weird. <laughs> yeah. Like I just I, I couldn't picture them all walking around a yacht in San Tropez, like sipping champagne and like what do you talk about? What what would be the conversation going on on that yacht? It could be anything. <laughs> oh, this is so yeah. good. I, You guys, celebrity blind items, I, this is why your podcast is just crushing it because it's fun. <laughs> you know? And again, we say not all blind items are true. A lot of them are alleged, but it is still fun to banter about and talk about and speculate and, and wonder what if. I know. Also, you guys, you guys killed it, by the way. Like, we host this show, and I wouldn't have guessed. I am so bad at guessing blind <laughs> items. It is, it's actually laughable. Like, it's a joke how much I, I can't guess a single one. I was just laughing about how, like, I got so lost on that one. You're like, she wore a striped shirt once to Costco. <laughs> she is an A-list daughter's mother's son. So if you, and if she has one right eye is red. And I'm like, wait, wh wh what am I, who am I guessing now? <laughs> I know. I almost didn't do the Lisa Marie one because I have somebody's, um, what they require for a beard, apparently. For What? For like a bearding PR relationship. Mm, interesting. But interesting. That's Give for us next one time. Taylor Swift blind item before we leave. Oh, off the top of my head? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I want just one. Um, there was one about how like she was trying to use Drake to get publicity, but that's kind of the only one. Oh, I couldn't find the one about her and Harry and how much they hated each other. Oh, that's oh, like, like their relationship was so fake and they just hate each other? Yeah. That's interesting. That's a, that's a fun one. That's yeah, fun. I couldn't find it. I, I <laughs> like, but again, good for yeah. her to... <laughs> I, I say good for them to use it to, like, mm -hmm. make themselves crazy famous by pretending to date. And I could see that yeah. with Drake as well. Like, it works. It, it has always worked for her with Jake Gyllenhaal and everyone else. So keep it up. <laughs> I love it. Well, you guys, thank you so much. And if you guys are into these blind items, definitely head on over to their podcast, Beyond the Blinds. Uh, so many good stories. They, they focus an episode on one celebrity most often, right? You guys do a celebrity. Um, like I said, the Scientology episode was something different that you can't hear. It was exclusively in my brain right now. Um, <laughs> But it's just, it is fun, it's entertaining, uh, and it, it's a full guessing game for like an hour, hour and a half. You guys are crushing it out there, and if you ever get a chance to watch them live, also very fun. The crowd is wild. It's true. That is one thing. I And, and drunk, wild and, and drunk. drunk. People screaming, saying, not yelling. Yeah, like just... <laughs> questions come in and then they'll put a microphone up halfway through and people come up and ask questions uh it was it was a really fun event and so um i hope one day adam and i can get to doing live events we've met we're not as cool as you guys yet <laughs> you guys would you be so it'd be so fun though to watch you guys now the live together. events are great <laughs> <laughs> but then Thank when adam you. and i are in the same room it's uh, really weird that's so much. <laughs> yeah, it's awkward it's not it's, it's weird <laughs> I didn't know he's a real person. <laughs> yeah. So where can people find you guys on social media so they can and so they can follow you? Yeah, our our Instagram is Beyond the Blinds Pod, and then I have one called Laguna Biatch. Um, yeah. And I also have one called Dunzo Pod. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that your 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 personal Dunzo Pod? Yeah. Yes, it's my personal respected uh, solo podcast. And then, um, yeah, we have Beyond the Blinds that we host together, obviously, and that Instagram is just beyond. The, it's private because we want to protect ourselves from being sued by Pete Davidson. But <laughs> if you add us and you have a profile picture, we will let you in. I love it. Well, thank you guys again for joining us. It's been really fun. I, it's been fun getting to know you guys over the last couple months. And yeah. um, 
having this uh, this friendship brew. So thank you guys for coming on and being willing to give us your top 10 favorite blinds of all time. That was really fun. And uh, we'll definitely have to do this again. Um, so you guys just start banking all your blinds, the good ones that you really like, and bring them back here. We will. We can we do promise. that. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. You are so good at that, dude. I'm going to say my guessing skills... I, my guessing skills are on par. I uh, I have been doing this for a long time, dude. Some of those are like it, 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 impossible to guess those people, right? It's really hard. It's I mean, honestly, if you're listening at home and you did well in this, congrats. I I commend you because that was for me was so difficult. And I'm pretty good at this stuff, but I could not figure this stuff out. Like I was, <laughs> I, like that was it, it was actually. It bothered me a lot because I thought I was good, but I guess I'm not. Like there were like, like riddles. It was tough. I I was I was really excited to do this episode. Number one because I I really like Troy and Kelly, and their podcast is just crushing it. Like they said at the beginning, people are just fascinated with blind items right now. I think they like the salaciousness of it. I think that they like the guessing game of it, and so having them on, I think, is just a fun different episode for us so i i don't know i hope i enjoyed it hopefully everyone at home or in their car or running or whatever the hell you're doing right now also enjoyed this and uh definitely write it let us know um make sure you leave us a review on itunes that is a huge huge thing for us um you know as you heard at the beginning we read out a couple uh, reviews to say thank you guys um but if you could take the time stop by and leave a review that would mean a lot to us and also we mentioned well adam did we have this private Facebook page. Uh, it's called uh, Off the Record, and it's crushing it right now. Adam's been do- putting all kinds of fun little tidbits in there, celebrities he's seeing on a daily basis or where events are happening or blind items or just fun content that we do not put here on the podcast itself. Um, and it's kind of a place for all of our listeners to get together, hang out, and you guys can talk directly to us because we're in there all the time chatting back with y'all. Yes, uh, follow me at Adam Glynn, G-L-Y-N. Follow Dax Holt at D-A-X-H-O-L-T. We'll see you guys next time. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. (laughs) 